listener, the secret word for this episode is garbage day. Can you say garbage day, Jay? I'm going to try not to. (laughs) Oh, there's no place like home for the holidays. And no matter how far away you roam, if you pine for the sunshine of a friendly game, Welcome back to Horror for the Holidays, a Christmas horror movie podcast. I'm Jay Logsdon. And I'm Jeff Searcy. Jeff, here we are. It happened. We knew this day was coming. We knew it was coming, and and it arrived. We're doing... Silent Night, Deadly Night, Part 2. Mm. Is there anything significant about that movie to us, Jay? Well, um, not that I can think of off the top of my head, but I would like to point out that um, if you do have questions about what happens in this movie, because we are going to gloss over a large <laughs> chunk of it, uh, go see episode um, 24 of this podcast, Jovial J, editor. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because as... As people in the know will know, Jay, Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2 is actually half its own movie and half the repeat of the first movie. My favorite thing is that there are people who are like, I love Silent Night, Deadly Night, I hate Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2, which whatever, it's fine. You you know, people are allowed, entitled to hate movies. And then my favorite thing is when someone pops up and they're like, I mean, you clearly like half of Silent Night, Deadly Night Part (laughs) 2. Yeah, true. Even though they did get rid of your hot young teens. Yeah. Oh, man. We'll talk about that. We'll we'll talk about that. We'll deck the halls. We'll set the scene for this movie. Uh, like I said, a sequel to 1984's Silent Night, Deadly Night. Uh, this was released April 10th, 1987. Ooh, bad, bad release date. <laughs> yeah. Not not any, even anywhere close to the holiday season. That might be as bad as like Scream 6 being a Halloween movie and being released in like May. True. True. Although this is both further away in both directions, I guess. So. Yeah, I was going to say, Ed, that'd be uh, Scream was closer to its launch window. Directed, edited, written, starred uh, as theater patr- patron, re-recording mixer Lee Harry, who may be best known as a producer for movie trailers. I saw like he did I, like some really big ones. He produced mm-hmm. some really big movies. Yeah, it seemed to be his primary focus. Like I want, I I I knew what it was off the top of my head, but I didn't write it down in my notes, and now I can't remember what the movies are. But like, I want to say like some of maybe like Jurassic Park movies, stuff like that. Yeah, I think you're right. I say I think I pulled the list. Um, he did work a lot with Steven Spielberg. Yes, uh, Jurassic Park was one of the ones he worked on. Yeah. So yeah, like I had, you know, here here we're gonna take a guy who normally does like produces movie trailers, and we're going to put him in charge of directing the sequel to this movie. Well, and it's appropriate, Jay, because you basically see a trailerized version of the first movie. <laughs> True. I mean, it is. he does do a great job of that. Uh, Joseph H. Earl, co-writer, uh, was also the voice of the Salvation Ar- Army Santa. Mm. Um, Harvey Jenkins, what, the cinema- cinematographer, is the body of that Santa. Apparently, the guy who was supposed to play the Salvation Army Santa in that scene. Salvation Army Santa. That's a tongue twister. Salvation Army Santa. Um didn't show up that day so they just grabbed two people and they're like here do this we need two people get out here now i thought that was pretty good writer sound supervisor dennis patterson um also did uh sound work on sorority house massacre 2 and slumber party massacre 3 and a bunch of other stuff like slc punk the computer war tennis shoes adam sandler's click oh yes of course adam sandler's click (laughs) but i mean i i figured i figured like Slumber Party Massacre and yeah. uh, Sorority House Massacre might be things that we'd be more likely cover on this podcast. Oh, it's happening eventually. And I mean, SLC Punk does have a stew from Scream in it. Mm. Uh, writer-producer Lawrence Applebaum um, also uh, did a movie called Hot Pants Holiday. Also produced a movie called Hot Pants Holiday, which is not a Christmas horror movie. What was that last name, Jay? Applebaum? But there's no Christmas in that house. <laughs> Um, also credited and rightly so is Joseph H. Earl, the writer of the original. I mean, yeah, he um, should be. Hey listeners, editor Jay here. What I meant to say was Michael Hickey, not Joseph H. Earl. 
Sorry about that, Michael Hickey. <laughs> We've got a lot of the cast from the original movie. Um, so we'll have returns of like Mr. Sims, Andy, Denise, and Robert Brian Wilson as Billy Chapman. All those fun characters. Billy Caldwell? <laughs> Right, their last name is Caldwell. Now? Yeah, suddenly their last name is just Caldwell, <laughs> uh, the star of the movie, uh, most famous for his iconically memed line, is uh, Eric Freeman as Ricky Caldwell slash Chapman, <laughs> for whatever reason. Yeah, I was say, what line is that, Jay? Uh, couldn't tell you. Um, I, I don't have my notes pulled up. Didn't note that, huh? Uh, James Newman as Doctor Henry Bloom. My my wife thinks that he looks like the dad from Frasier, John Maloney. Mm. <laughs> Fuck off, dog. Uh, Elizabeth <laughs> Kaitan plays Jennifer, Ricky's love interest. She is also Robin in uh, Friday the 13th 7, Jason versus Carrie. Ah, uh, okay. Which I, I thought that was probably the most famous thing she did. The new blood, if you're trying to look that up. No, it's Jason versus Carrie. Well, I mean, that's what it is, yeah, but they weren't legally allowed to call it that. Gene Miller replaces Lillian Chauvin as Mother Superior. Uh, we'll talk about that when she shows up. Naughty. Uh, Janice Carlsberg and Jer Turner replace our hot young teens fucking in the orphanage from the original movie. Damn. Um, I don't know why they did it because all the other scenes are pretty much shot for shot the same. They just mm-hmm. replaced these two people. If you want to see what we're talking about, go out to our TikTok account at horror, the number four holidays, horror four holidays and watch like the first TikTok we ever put out. Yep. It's literally showing the two seeds and why they are different people. And this, I cannot find a reason why. This is an issue that is very near and dear to Jay's heart. He will literally scream out what happened to my hot young <laughs> teens every time he sees it. I mean, these people are noticeably <laughs> no less older. attractive yeah. and older. <laughs> it's true. Um, budget of $250,000 according to Wikipedia, but $100,000 listed on IMDb. I assume the 250000 is the combined total... Yeah. Of both movies? Well, the 250000 I think, was the advertising budget added to the movie's budget. Okay. Because I read, uh, from what I could gather, it did not break even. It made about $150,000. Yep. And so that's why uh, the sequels uh, degrade in quality even more than this one. Or are better? I don't know. It depends on well, your I guess perspective. It, it depends on your perspective, I suppose. Uh, filmed in California, which would explain why it looks awfully green and unsnowy from yep. December 24th. Unlike the original, which is very snowy, because I think it's supposed to be Utah or whatever. Mm, yeah. Written over a weekend and shot in seven days. Well, geez, I could have never guessed that. <laughs> Pretty impressive. Uh, supposedly, Eric Freeman, our star, raises raises his eyebrows 130 times in this movie. I could believe it. Uh, Eric Freeman was trying to be a serious actor at the time, but <laughs> got no direction from the director other than bigger and crazier. And sadly, it kind of led him to going into hiding. (laughs) Bigger and crazier, huh? Uh, uh, According to Joe Bob, like, they they even started, like, because this movie became so memed, specifically one one particular moment, um, that that they, like, started an online campaign to find Eric Freeman and get him out of hiding. What was that meme, Jay? Couldn't tell you. Really? (laughs) Yep. Hmm. Uh, tagline of the movie is the nightmare is about to begin again. <laughs> again. Here we go again. Again. Uh, <laughs> personal experience with this movie, Jeff? Uh, well, I watched the Joe Bob episode a while back when it was still available. Right. We are, it's we. It, you can watch the just Joe Bob and you can watch the movie on shutter, but you can't watch the Joe Bob episode with the movie together on shutter, but you can still do black Christmas. And then uh, I was at a party at my brother's apartment, and uh, my sister wanted to watch it. And she, her uh, now fiancé said, well, do I need to have seen the first one to watch it? And she was like, no, you'll see the first one in this one. I, she's right. <laughs> the uh, One of the things I think of is there was one time someone asked like something about watching this franchise. You know, like the logical thing would be to do, you know, start at the beginning or start at the second movie. And I think about the person online who one time was like, no, start at the third one. Just see what happens. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could. I mean, honestly, any point in this series is a decent entry point. Yeah, that's that is one. That is actually one strong point about these movies is that like you can kind of they all kind of stand alone on their own. You really don't need to have seen any of the other ones. Uh, My personal experience, as people know, I had Silent Night, Deadly Night's one of my favorite movies. This is also one of my favorite movies. It's 
It's so silly. It's bittersweet though because they ripped away his hot young teens. It's, but it's, I mean, it's it's its own. I, we'll, we'll talk about it later. I don't want to spoil my my final rating, but but it's its own. It's its own magical beast. It's definitely a thing. Uh, you can. I think you can watch it on Tubi. Watch it on Shutter. I mean, um, just buy it. Yeah, just buy it. I mean, go you buy it on Screenbox or Scream Factory. You can often get it bundled with the first movie. Too. Yeah. Um, there was even a. At one point, Scream Factory, when they first released it, did like a run of like the first 2,000 orders also got a Ricky action figure. I do not own one of those action figures. <laughs> you should, uh, basically, if you like the meme, the movie is one long version of that meme. So you might as well just uh, buy it and enjoy it. I, I don't know. Yeah. I, if, you're, if you're some kind of meme lord who is crazy about that one line in this movie that I can't remember. Uh, <laughs> It's, oh, I remember it now, Jay. It's trash time. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Well, <laughs> it's trash time. Let's do our synopsis. Over the opening credits, uh, we get scenes of Ricky sitting in a prison wait, uh, prison waiting room smoking a cigarette as instrumental music plays in the background. <laughs> Dr. Bloom and an orderly get, a, get set up for the interview. Which takes forever, by the way. I timed it four and a half <laughs> minutes almost. We gotta get this baby to feature length. <laughs> of, just, of just Ricky sitting like smoking a cigarette. People just staring at each other. By the way, even with moments like that, which are sprinkled throughout this movie, it still barely makes it to 88 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> like, constantly turning. <laughs> Turning and like, like you know, someone will make a noise and then you'll just and like and they'll like look up like scared and then the, the like Ricky will turn and stare at them <laughs> and, and then it will have like another credit pop up on the scene. I, when I was making my notes, I was like, okay, so half of this movie is the first movie, <laughs> the other half of this movie is like long weird silences and Ricky staring into the camera, and they could still barely get it to eighty eight minutes. <laughs> oh man. Um, also, like the sun is shining. There's there's green on the trees. It says December. 24th at the bottom and like birds are singing like it's springtime <laughs> well you know jay it's californian springtime uh the to say like i said the date december 24th flashes at the bottom of the screen um dr bloom and ricky discuss how he got in this situation as we enter our flashbacks to the original movie uh we're not gonna recap the whole thing um, we'll just do a do a brief rundown for them in case they haven't seen it. Basically, Billy, uh, Billy and Ricky were well. That's you know even even now like there are things that are slightly different. We'll talk yes. about that but after we do the the brief thing. Billy and Ricky were going to see yeah. their parents for uh, or their grandpa for Christmas. Uh, Billy's grandpa was super creepy. I uh, told him if we see Santa Claus tonight, boy, he better run. Yep. Um. They, a uh, guy in a Santa suit robs a convenience store and uh, kills the convenience store owner and speeds away. His car breaks down and the Chapmans pull up. Um, Don't you mean the Caldwells? The Caldwells <laughs> pull up in their car to, uh, to, to give him some help. You know, Billy, hey, you get to see Santa like tonight. Mm-hmm. You know, be all excited. And he gets all scared. Um, the Santa kills his parents. He runs off. And uh, Billy and Ricky wind up in an orphanage where Billy's basically terrified of Christmas, terrified of Santa Claus, constantly getting on Mother Superior's nerves. Oh, and uh, apparently Ricky has perfect recollection of this entire thing, even though he was a literal baby at the time. <laughs> he remembers being born. It's really <laughs> impressive. Um, he uh, grows up, uh, gets a job at a toy store. Which um, is a terrible idea if you hate Christmas. And then winds up being convinced to be the store Santa. And... <laughs> Um, he does goes that on a killing spree? Yep, yeah, go, goes crazy, goes on a killing spree, uh, murders. I think I counted eight people on yeah. his way from the from Iris Toys back to the orphanage, where he tries to kill Mother Superior. Right at the end, he gets thwarted and shot by uh, the sheriff and Sister Margaret. Like also arrived trying to try there because she's trying to help him, and he like looks up, says it's okay, kid. Santa Claus is dead as his axe lays on the ground in front of Ricky, and then Ricky kind of looks up and he says, naughty, and that's the end of the original movie. Yep. He causes, he kills eight people, but he causes the death of nine, which will be another point of contention, because the deaf father who gets shot in this one for being in a Santa suit is now the deaf who? The deaf janitor. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, so yeah, things to point out from the flashback <laughs> that are different from the original. No mention of Grandpa at all. Mm-hmm. I think they say they're going to his house. But we don't get the whole, you see Santa Claus tonight, boy, you better run, run for your life. It's traumatizing him to Santa. Which is a great moment. Yes. Like, like, I, you know. One of the most powerful moments in the first movie. Uh, like, like we said, the hot young teens that, uh, 
a young Billy spies fucking in the orphanage are replaced by other people for some reason. <laughs> replaced by middle-aged normies. The entire scene is exactly the same otherwise, but the, the, but the people are switched and I don't know why. Um, in the original, um, the deputy kills the deaf priest. In this one, it's a deaf janitor. Um, we get, uh, we don't get the warm side of the door montage of Billy working in the toy store throughout the spring and summertime. Shame. Um, instead it's like, it almost implies that he got hired to be the Santa, which yeah. is all even sillier because like, no, this guy doesn't yes. look like Santa he Claus would, at all. And he would never apply. Oh yeah. That was another thing. They call him fat Jay when he's getting in his Santa suit. It's like Billy Chapman is nowhere near fat. No, he, I, I, li- I, I still think about the thing my wife sent me where it's like, you know, the hottest, the hottest killer Santa of all. And it's Billy Chapman and like <laughs> Billy Caldwell. And it's like, no, absolutely. Like mm-hmm. Robert Bride Wilson is our hottest killer Santa. Well, yes. Oh, of course we've mentioned it numerous times, but the whole Chapman Caldwell thing. Um, and then, yeah, like, like Jeff said, um, how would Ricky know all of the <laughs> events of that night played out? Like yeah. how, how would he know that? Billy was triggered by Andy uh, trying to uh, rape what uh, Pamela. Yes, and like that kind of like like everything else being Santa Claus already kind right. of you know already kind of was triggering these these you know these moments, but it was that moment of seeing that and, and him ripping her blouse off, which is mm-hmm. reminiscent of what the Santa did to his mom. Yeah, like how would how would Ricky know that that's what happened? All he would know is that Billy killed these two people. Yes, I mean, well, even it's like. You could make the argument maybe that Billy might have told him what happened that night, but he never talks about it, so that seems far fetched well, too. Yeah, that's the thing is is literally Ricky sees you know, Billy get shot in front of him. They had no chance to communicate. Yeah, yeah that's I'm talking uh like his events like when he's the baby or whatever, you mm. could make make an argument, Oh, Billy told him what happened that night. Right, or whatever. Oh yeah, right. But yes, the stuff Billy did while as an adult on his killing spree, there's no way Ricky would have any knowledge of that because he was dead. <laughs> My favorite being the uh the cops going and invading that other family's house <laughs> and like That you know, is great. Daddy, daddy, like <laughs> that Ricky would have no idea that cops tried to stop a a dad dressed santa from surprising his kid no jay he remembers everything even events he wasn't present (laughs) for and has no way to know but yeah it's just it's just wild that like ricky has all this information stored up now we get to the new stuff uh ricky was adopted by the rosenbergs who and i quote definitely didn't get didn't get involved with christmas no danger of any christmas in that house jay they're Uh, some new york yeah they're one of those new york couples i hear so much about if you ever saw that trial and error show with john lithgow you know the joke jeff and i are making i need me a new york lawyer i need one of those new york lawyers as he strokes his nose uh ricky sees some nuns and it makes him kind of freak out um, it, almost like dramatic Amityville exorcist omen music kind of plays yep. when he sees the nuns. Well, you know what the funniest part of the whole thing is? They duck into a shop while his mom is looking and then they come back out and it goes back to slow motion and <laughs> yeah. back to dramatic music. <laughs> and then they go into another store and like a guy like throws like a red blanket over a chair and like Ricky sees it being you know riddled with bullets like just <sighs> like the Santa Claus, just like his brother in front of him. Naughty. Um, it does see, it must be said at this point, like the Rosenbergs are kind of worried about Ricky and mm-hmm. it does seem like they genuinely care about him. Like, I think the dad's like, he's my son. I want to know what's wrong with him. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, no, it seems like he did find a good home. Like, I thought that was like kind of a really sweet moment that stuck out to me. Um, at age 17, uh, Ricky's adopted dad dies and feeling alone in the world. He likes to go for walks by himself. <laughs> I like to walk dramatically on the back streets, Jay. Uh, he sees a couple having a picnic. The man tries to rape the woman and rips her blouse off, which makes him think back to his mom, a thing he never saw. Mm-hmm. And also to Billy with <laughs> Andy and Pamela, another thing he didn't see. No, Jay, he remembers everything. And so like the guy kind of storms off 
And that's yeah. why when we get to the naughty list, I'm going to argue that he's actually a supernatural into DJ because he has knowledge of things he couldn't possibly know. <laughs> he starves off to get a beer from his truck. And when he like walks past the front, Ricky's now just sitting in the driver's seat, starts up the, starts up the Jeep and then drives over him, reverses, <laughs> drives like, back the other way. Drives over him a ridiculous number. <laughs> I want to say it's like three or four times. <laughs> and we see like his hand kind of twitching. And unlike in the original movie, um, the, the girl is, like, thankful that Ricky killed yes, her, um, her, her asshole, her, her asshole boyfriend. boyfriend. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, Which also, is that never made sense to me in the first movie. Why, why Pamela is so mad at him for yeah. killing. Yep. <laughs> it's very strange. Um, 18-year-old Ricky, now played by Eric Freeman, is working washing dishes because, like, the doctor's like, no, I, I you know, we, I, you know, I went to college. And Ricky's like, lucky. I never got to go to college. I had to get a job. A job. Um, Just a shout out to Eric Freeman's line delivery in this movie. He sees a guy getting worked over by a lone shark named Rocco, who has very goofy facial expressions. The best character in the movie, Jay. I mean, you love him. You Rocco do. the lone shark. I actually enjoy this, so I hope you don't pay on Monday. <laughs> yeah, go, I'll, I'll pay on Monday. <laughs> And like, but yeah, just has some of the absolute goofiest facial expressions you'll ever see. Like, uh, Rocco wipes his face with a red handkerchief. Remember red. <laughs> oh God. Red. It's a Billy with a Billy saw red all the time. It never triggered him except in that one specific instance. Also that the color of red, you know, that color that's everywhere. Yeah, I was going to say, and it's like Ricky would literally be seeing it every day too. Uh, Ricky runs him through with an umbrella that he then opens. And then as he walks away after Rocco has been killed with this umbrella, it starts raining. <laughs> Such a silly scene. Yeah, yet another thing that makes me think he must be some kind of supernatural entity, Jay. He knew the weather was going to change. Dr. Bloom then asks Ricky about Jennifer, a, pick, a person Ricky says is the only person he ever cared about. And we get a meet cute scene where literally they met, he was backing up on his motorcycle, and she runs into him with her car. <laughs> And then he looks all mad and he looks all perturbed. She gets out, never says sorry, never says, I didn't see you. Just kind of smiling and laughing. And then he just smiles at her. <laughs> I hit you and almost killed you, you dumbass. We then get a long, like, extended montage of them dr riding the motorcycle through, like, the hills of California and then fucking in profile. It's a dating relationship montage. Um, they go to the movies and we get a clip of the killer Santa from the original movie robbing the convenience store because, um, according to Jennifer, it's about a guy who dresses up like Santa Claus and kills people to which Ricky responds, what? <laughs> what? Oh, good heavens. <laughs> one of, one of Eric, one of Eric Freeman's best line deliveries in the whole movie is like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, there's a heckler in the audience who calls Ricky an F slur. Um, even though Ricky is the one sitting there with a girl and the heckler in the audience is there, is sitting there with a guy. <laughs> um, he commits the biggest sin of all, Jay. He talks during the movie. Yep. It's disgusting. It's the it's the it's the couple that brought the baby to Thanksgiving all over yeah. again. And also, uh, in addition to talking during the movie, so he's talking. His friend is like slumped down in the seat next to him, embarrassed, and he turns to him and just throws a handful of popcorn in his face. <laughs> and then, well, and then I love after after you know after he insults Ricky, <laughs> Ricky's girlfriend's like, "Well, we both know that's not true." <laughs> So then Ricky's like, Ricky gets up. He's like, I'll take care of this. And I love that you get, you get the, the only scenes you get from the, like of the movie playing mm -hmm. are those scenes from the original Silent Night, Deadly Night. The rest of it is dialogue that doesn't match anything that's going on. Like, you know, they, I, there's literally a thing where they're talking about like priests and it's like, how does this relate to a ki guy who dresses up in a Santa Claus suit and kills people? <laughs> and then like later on, I think it's even a different conversation. Well, you know, Jay. Well, they re they'd already reused Silent Night, Deadly Night twice at this point, so they're like, maybe we shouldn't put even more in there. Uh, but Ricky, uh, what, uh, go, ba basically the guy at one point is like, 
you know, I know what's going to happen. They're going to go down to the basement alone without a flashlight. And like he do, they do a thing where like the camera kind of like follows the, the obnoxious dude in the theater. And he's like talking to his friend really loudly. Like, oh, I know what's going to happen next. And then it pans back a third time. His friend's gone. And he's talking right to like Eric Freeman's chest. <laughs> and then we just see the dude get jumped as popcorn like flies everywhere. And his limbs are flailing as yeah. Ricky's just beating the shit out of him. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Chip... Jennifer's old boyfriend is slid in next to her. Yeah, shows up. He tries to tries to win her back. At one point, Jennifer's like, "Oh, you're on the clock," and he's like, "Roxanne, oh, she's just keeping me warm till you want me back, baby." <laughs> and then she's like, "Meters running, Chip, or are you using your credit card this time?" <laughs> real real weird dialogue as you say also doesn't make any sense <laughs> she did she did like comes she's like oh ricky let or you know ricky let's go and he sits down on the opposite side of her in a different chair and he's like no nah, i'm beginning to like this movie <laughs> <laughs> later uh ricky and jennifer go for a walk uh and they run into chip chip insults uh jennifer and ricky uh, basically like, you know, and basically he's like, oh, you know, she loves you. Yeah. That's what she said to me in the back of my back of my car. Like blah, blah, blah. Oh, can we also point out the fact that chip, uh, he gets electrocuted by jumper cables. Why does he have a set of jumper cables and no other car there to jump his I have, car? I have no idea. <laughs> what is he doing with those jumper but, yeah, cables? Ricky, Ricky grabs <laughs> shit. Oh, Chip puts on sunglasses because it's important for this scene. He's literally talking to Ricky and puts on sunglasses because Ricky grabs him by the throat and like like it shoves him down to the hood of the car, hooks up the jumper cables to like his molars, and then turns them on, and he gets electrocuted so much his eyeballs explode out of his uh, <laughs> out of his sunglasses. Quality scene looks really good. Um, Jennifer gets angry at Ricky for this and, uh, he flashes back to mother superior and how, and then he yells punish before strangling her with the antenna of, <laughs> of Chip's car. Punish. I think, I think what triggers him the most is when she's like, I hate you, Ricky. Yeah. Real Anakin. You're a monster maybe is even a thing. Real Anakin Skywalker shit. Um, and then a cop who just happened to like watch <laughs> this whole thing go down. He like, he's, he's like, don't do it boy. And like, there's two dead bodies. He, it seems like he could have probably stopped this sooner. He definitely could have. He could have just shot him when he came towards him. But instead he waited for Ricky to kill two people before interve- or intervening. He, he like, he like goes to handcuff Ricky. Ricky just grabs his gun and makes him shoot himself <laughs> with it. Then he goes on some kind of shooting spree. Yeah, Ricky now has a gun. Which, I mean, I wish Billy would have thought of that. Um, And he goes through the neighborhood. He kills a guy who's uh, literally, he just steps aside. He's like, what the fuck's all that noise? And Ricky just (laughs) shoots the dude. That's a great one. And then there's just a guy who's uh, taking out his trash cans. Uh, that guy gets killed. Oh, but you forgot uh, when Ricky sees him taking out the trash, he's like, ha, 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 it's trash day. Huh? <laughs> he's like, it's uh, garbage receptacle time. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a little girl on a bike uh, <laughs> runs into Ricky, says sorry, and he just lets her live, which is kind of reminiscent of the little girl that Billy lets live yeah. in the original. Um, well, and you see a little bit of Ricky's humanity earlier on too, because he does seem genuinely sad about his adopted dad's death. Yeah. He then shoots at a car driving towards him. And, um, in one scene, the actor who was the, st- who, like the stunt man at the time, literally narrowly avoids getting hit by the car <laughs> as it's coming towards him, like takes a step to the side and it maybe missed him by like eight inches. Yep. Them's the brakes. And then the car lands on the ground and then just explodes and bursts into flames. <laughs> That's just what they do, Jay. Uh, Ricky then continues to like wander through the neighborhood and, uh, you know, pulls out the gun. There's these cops standing there like, don't do it. We'll shoot. Don't do it. Drop the gun. (laughs) And Ricky like goes to turn the gun on himself. Once again, this guy just killed a bunch of people. Just shoot him. Like yeah, you could have easily just shot him and instead, you know, he turns the gun on himself. Don't do it. You have too much to live for. Pulls the trigger, pulls the trigger. Nothing happens because he's out of bullets. It flashes into the interview room and he's like, no more bullets, no more bullets. And he says bullets the weirdest way I've ever heard. Bullets. <laughs> and then Ricky like walks out, walks out of the room and he's like, this is my life, huh? And he like sets down the, uh, he like he like walks past the like walks towards the door as Doctor Bloom's been strangled with the reel to reel tape. Mm-hmm. We hear like the door open and we hear two different orderlies like yell for help as Ricky escapes <laughs> and the the tape on the on the uh, 
Reel for reel just keeps spinning. Spinning, yeah, because it's not hooked up to the other reel. Apparently, six hours have passed. <laughs> and, really? That seems um, odd that no one would have noticed him gone in six hours. Sister Mary and the and the police lieutenant are now sitting in the room trying to figure out where he went and what happened in this scene. And Sister Mary's like, well, I don't know where he could have gone. The orphanage is closed and Mother Superior had a stroke and lives by herself. Thanks for all the exposition. Uh, oh, and also, how could Mother Superior have had a stroke? She was always so uh, low-key and calm, Jay. Uh, we cut to Mother Superior's house. Um, apparently, this is the kind of stroke that causes you to have massive lesions all over your face <laughs> to hide the fact that you aren't Lillian Chauvin. Yes, that was so weird. That makeup job is, like, disgusting. It looks... It, she looks truly awful. <laughs> um, Mother Superior gets a phone call from Ricky, who has murdered her Salvation Army Santa, stolen his costume, and, like, the whole time, like, in this scene is like humming jingle bells to himself and then tells mother superior, Merry Christmas. Santa's back laughs and hangs up the phone. <laughs> like you do. Well, obviously he's trying to get revenge for his brother. Yep. Uh, mother superior kind of like pushes her way in her wheelchair through her house and <laughs> like turns on like the Christmas parade and refers to it as like sacrilegious filth. Uh, and then uh ricky axes his way through her door which the house number is 666 which is a nice touch yeah i do like that uh he chases this woman in a wheelchair through her house in a very like extended scooby-doo-esque like, chase say, scene. this thing makes absolutely no sense um she literally throws she gets out of her wheelchair at the top of the stairs throws herself down the stairs and then somehow has her wheelchair again at the bottom like of the stairs. lands in another wheelchair <laughs> It's amazing, because and, and like the whole this whole time, Ricky's trying to get his axe out of the seat yes. of the wheelchair. Well, and you know um, how people in wheelchairs don't move that quickly. He can't catch her leaving her bedroom and getting to the stairs in the first place. She she gets a knife and she kind of like starts taunting Ricky about like how like he's naughty and he needs to take his punishment and blah 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 blah. Ricky walks in the room behind her for, through the kitchen and like says naughty this as he raises his axe and then we cut to the police cars approaching the ha- like speeding up to the house. Um, Sister Mary's running in to see what's yep, going Sister on. Sister Mary and, and the lieutenant run in. They see uh, they see Mother Superior sitting at a table like in her wheelchair. And, you know, Sister Mary's talking to her like, oh, I'm glad we got here just in time. Touches her and her head falls off. Sister Mary screams as Ricky pops up with a boo. I think that's what he says. I couldn't. Yeah, something like that. He just goes, boo! <laughs> and the cop fires four shots into him, the last one causing him to fall backwards through, like, the double glass doors gotta that have, lead out to her backyard. Gotta have fall through a good plate glass door. Sister Mary kind of wakes up, like is shaken awake by the lieutenant, looks over. Oh, we get a slow pan up of Ricky's body, like lying mm-hmm. there motionless. And then the lieutenant wakes up Sister Mary and she like kind of like dazed, looks around where am I? Sees Mother Superior's head, screams again. We cut back to Ricky. He's gone, it, sister. It's it, over. His eyes open and he smiles at the camera. And then we get the scene from the original movie where... Uh, Billy has like a dream where he's uh, having sex with Pamela and then he literally like the Santa's knife, the Santa's knife and sleeve from the original movie comes out and like stabs him. That's, that's a scene from the original movie. Mm -hmm. They just take the scene of the Santa's knife stabbing towards the screen. And that's what we have our end credits roll over. Perfect. (laughs) Perfect movie. No notes. 10 out of 10. (laughs) 11 out of 10. (laughs) I mean, yeah, it's a great movie and they added even more great stuff to it. (laughs) Well, where do you want to start with our minutia? Hmm, I don't know. We could skip right to our uh, trash day segment if you wouldn't. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, we have a mailbag segment that we do on every episode. Yeah, we call it like trash time or whatever. I don't know what you're talking about. Let's start with uh, <laughs> let's start with Christmas wrapping, costumes, etc. Oh, all right, I guess. Um. Chip looks and dresses like a real 80s movie douche. Blonde mullet, like white sports coat. What a coincidence. He is an 80s movie douche. <laughs> he, he, like, he, to be all he's missing is, like, talking like this. Like, oh. but he mentions, like, his dad's yacht. Like, My everything family. about Chip makes him a douche. Yep, pretty much. 
Um, love the gore effects on his kill. I think they look fantastic. I mean, all the gore effects are pretty good. Mother Superior's severed head looks great. Mm-hmm. Um, her makeup job too, disgusting. Yeah, her like it looks it looks gross. I don't know why she had a stroke, and that's their definition, or their <laughs> that's their like uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like that's their excuse for yeah. like hiding her face. I think that's what I'm trying to say. Is the uh, is like, oh, she had a stroke. That's why we put all this shit on her face. They're like, we got to find a plot reason to obscure this woman's face because it's not the same lady. But like, otherwise, I don't, you know, I don't think there's too much like to write home about. Like, I, the, you know, the kill with the umbrella is great. Like mm. the the bloody hand underneath the car is awesome. The great scene with the. Uh, with the car almost hitting the stunt driver is is great. The decapitated head mm-hmm. looks great. But yeah, nothing like, you know, costumes. I Ricky's Santa suit is not as good. No. As, as much as we complained that they only used one Santa suit for all of Silent Night, Deadly Night. It was a better quality it's, one. It's a much better quality Santa suit. Uh, moving on, what do you want to do next? Uh, well, why don't we go ahead and talk about the quote. All Jay. right, we'll do Christmas Carol favorite quotes. Let me pull mine up here. Gee, there's. I feel like there's some quote we use all the time from this movie. <laughs> some Jay. iconic quote. I don't, let's well, let's work our way through and let's see what see, we let's find. See what we got on our list. Just um, to make sure you know. My name is Doctor Bloom. You can call me Henry, or if you feel more comfortable, you can call me Doc. Fuck off, Doc. <laughs> Ricky. <laughs> yep, that's one of mine. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh. uh the thing where uh, they break down in front of after he electrocutes Chip, and she's like, "I hate you, Ricky. I hate you." And he just looks at her all serious and goes, "Punish." <laughs> uh, um, and Jennifer gulps. She literally goes, "Oh, uh oh." <laughs> <laughs> uh, when when uh, Ricky's talking about his parents getting killed by the uh, by the Santa. He goes, it was, jo- it was him, Jolly St. Nick, with a knife in his hand. <laughs> oh, here, here's one of my favorite uh, nonsensical exchanges to stall for time between uh, Dr. Bloom and Ricky. I'm not one for games, Ricky. I'm a professional. My time is very valuable. Oh, and mine isn't? Your time is running out, son. I'm your last chance. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, that makes you think you can bullshit your way into my head like every other pencil neck piece of shit. <laughs> my favorite thing, too, is like, Ricky, no, you're in prison. Your time is not valuable. <laughs> exactly. As Billy is getting spl- spanked in the flashback, Ricky's kind of like standing there also getting spanked and it keeps cutting in with, she was naughty. <laughs> Uh, another exchange between Ricky and Dr. Bloom addressing the fact that he couldn't possibly remember any of the stuff he's quote unquote remembering that bastard. He left us out there to die in reference to the Santa who killed their parents. That was long ago. How could you possibly remember all that Ricky? Because I was there, you know, I don't like your attitude blue. (laughs) Like literally just saying, don't question it. Don't read too much into this. You're not supposed to look at too much into what happens in this movie. <laughs> it's not going to make any sense if you think about it even for a second. <laughs> um, another when uh, when Ricky when Bill, Ricky's talking about Billy getting punished for after punching the Santa that shows up at the orphanage when they were younger. Ricky says, "No one heard him screaming, but I did." Well, then you then oh. someone heard him screaming. It can't be no yeah, one. Exactly. Oh, I oh, I think I found the quote that we use, Jay. All right, what what is it? Um, Ricky sees a man carrying a garbage can to the street, uh-huh. and uh, when he shoots him, he says, "It's garbage time." <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the cla- It's garbage time. It's why where the, it's morbid time. Came <laughs> I can't from. believe we didn't think of it earlier. Yeah, obviously it's the garbage time segment. Uh, red car <laughs> when uh, Ricky is telling Doctor Blue about the attempted rape. And uh, he seeing the red jeep, uh, <laughs> Doctor Blue was written in big letters, like red car. And R- Ricky goes, "Red car, good point." <laughs> <laughs> uh, another exchange. Basically, I loved all the exchanges between Ricky and the Doctor, even though they made absolutely no sense. But uh, <laughs> this is a, and it's a little follow up to the fuck off Doc from earlier. He's like, uh, you're really starting to get to me, Doc. Then tell me about Jennifer. Eat shit. I have that one, too. <laughs> tell me about Jennifer. Eat shit. <laughs> and then literally immediately goes afterwards, Jennifer, Jennifer, 
she was the only person I cared about. Like he immediately changes his tune, yeah. like from one scene to the, from like one minute to the oh, next. I got when he shoots the car coming at him during the ending shooting montage, it flips over and explodes, and he's like, "Bingo!" <laughs> <laughs> it's like what? Oh, I so think good. I don't think Mother Superior had a stroke. I think Ricky did. <laughs> I the the. Merry Christmas! Santa's back! <laughs> oh, uh, Ricky and Chip uh, is my final quote. Ricky's like, that's enough. Chip's like, oh, it speaks. And Ricky's like, I said, that's enough. And Chip's like, listen, bud, that's what she said when I fucked her brains out in the back seat of Old Red here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Also, uh, I think you might be doing it wrong. If she's like, "That's enough." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Maybe, 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 maybe Chip's bad at sex. I think <laughs> certainly, certainly, what I did learn from from these two movies is there are a lot of guys in the in, in like these two movies with issues with consent. Yeah. <laughs> it's a reoccurring theme in these movies. Um. <laughs> Let's move on to Christmas Spirit. How Christmassy is the movie? How Christmassy are the kills? Um, well, the kills are mildly Christmassy, I would say, because uh, in some of them he's dressed as Santa. But, uh, <laughs> one of them he's dressed as Santa. Well, there's the flashback ones, I guess, of Billy doing it too. Uh, but yeah, I would say mm, low Christmas level on the kills and Christmas in the movie medium, I guess. Like other than the stuff from the original movie. There isn't much Christmassy till like the end when Ricky escapes on December twenty fourth. Yeah, because like he escapes, there's a phone booth, and like when, when we hear him murdering the Salvation Army Santa, there's like some Christmas decorations in the background, mm-hmm. and then like there's a couple Christmas decorations at Mother Superior's house. Yeah, and that's it. And there's like a little robot Santa playing like jingle bells or something <laughs> that Ricky hits <laughs> with his axe. Um, the kills. Um, Ricky dresses as a Santa or in a Santa suit. And um, uses an axe to kill one person as he chases Mother Superior around her house. Yep. So, I mean, that's Christmassy, but, like, the rest of the stuff takes place, like, at all times of the year and is not yep. at all Christmassy. No, the the bulk of the Christmas capacity of this movie, I would say, is in the flashbacks to the original. Oh, man. But, yes, if you took, if you took the new parts, which is... I don't know, probably about 30 minutes worth of actual new stuff. I want to say maybe about 40, but yeah, I think, <laughs> oh. I think there's a little more, I think there's a little more new movie than there is old movie. Uh, that part's not Christmassy at all. I yeah. would say uh, like, yeah, up until the very end, I would say maybe like the last couple scenes, mm. uh, broken bulb, brilliant bulb. One thing you would fix. One thing you want to shout out. Uh, I want to shout out. I'll start with that this time instead of my broken. Bulb. Ooh, I'll, it up. I want to shout out Eric Freeman's performance in this Jay. He's what makes this movie so entertaining. Otherwise, it would just be a horrible slog. And I mean, in some points, it still is, especially when they're doing flashbacks to the movie you've already seen. But uh, no, he really makes it, especially his long conversation with the doctor that's like the first two thirds of the movie. All those points where he cuts in are just like, it's so entertaining and so ridiculous at the same time. It's just, it keeps, it's kind of like that blood beat effect. You're wondering what the hell's going on and why they decided to make, even make this movie. And what a blood beat is. Yes. And you're wondering what a silent night, deadly night is in this movie. <laughs> but no, I, I really enjoyed his performance in this. And I think that's honestly the only reason to watch it really. My, uh, my brilliant bulb. I, and I echo that, um, my my brilliant bulb. Since we're we're going out of order, uh, for such a low budget, like the effects aren't bad. It's competently shot. The stunt guy almost gets hit by a car while dangerous is a great looking yeah. scene. No, it is. I will give it that too. It is a movie. It, clearly, some care went into this. I mean, if you take the production value of this versus, say, like a blood beat, like I just referenced, it's like way way above. Or a Krampus the Christmas Devil. Oh God, don't even. That's not a movie, Jay. <laughs> that never happened. <laughs> that's that that's a shared hallucination that you and I had. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully we don't have to share the next hallucination for a long time. So broken bulb, one thing you would fix? Uh the main thing I would fix is uh give Ricky more of his own story. Don't rely so much on Billy's story building all of his like motivations and like his character flaws. <laughs> Because he's basically just Billy again. Like, God, we wish we didn't kill Billy in that first movie so we could have done a sequel. 
That's basically what this movie feels like. Uh, my Broken Bulb is, um, like, you know, initially I wanted to say, like, script, director. But if if I say those things, this movie isn't the movie that it is. And so, like, I want to say, like, more Christmas stuff. Like, make mm. it more apparent that it's Christmas time. Yeah, no, that could work, too. Like, it, it's, it's a tiny thing. But, like, you know, you change one of those big things, and it, I think it completely changes the movie. No, it could have changed quite a bit. But, yeah, just... For me, it's just relying too much on making Ricky just like a, a continuation of Billy. Any Anything else you want to bring up before we get into our final rating? Mm, I mean, just uh, you mentioned it once before when we were talking about costumes and stuff, but the gore effects, I think uh, that team did a really good job, especially on uh, Mother Superior's disturbing, uh, disgusting makeup. <laughs> All right, so let's get into our final ranking. Uh, every episode of Horror for the Holidays, we rank our Christmas horror movie on one of three categories. Is it seasonally scary? Is it ho 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 hilarious? Or is it you'll be sorry? Jeff? Uh, it's ho 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 hilarious. I don't think that should be a surprise to anybody with how much we've been laughing <laughs> recounting the events of this movie. But yeah, it's it's one you won't regret watching, but it's one you should not take too seriously. If you're going into this thinking it's the same kind of movie as Silent Night, Deadly Night, I think you're going to be disappointed, which is what I think happens to a lot of people. It's like it does not it does not match the tone of the first movie at all. And I think I haven't seen all the other entries, but I'm pretty sure that unevenness in tone continues. It pre- it pretty much does. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, if you're expecting something like Silent Night, Deadly Night, you're not going to get it. But if you want like an enjoyable movie to sit down and watch, like especially like with friends or uh, the Joe Bob commentary on, it's pretty good too. Now the like the 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 remaining four movies, the three you know. Uh, better watch out initiation and toy maker. And then the, the silent night, deadly night remake just titled silent night all like are wildly different. Like, mm-hmm. and then it, it kind of all comes around at the end with the, with the remake where it kind of goes back to a killer Santa, but the next three movies are just all dramatically different <laughs> movies. Yeah, no, I, I would recommend it. No, I think this would be like a great movie for, uh, like renting out a theater and like getting a bunch of friends to watch it and just, you know, a Rocky horror picture show type mm. type thing where people just have fun, like screaming all the lines and stuff yeah. like that. Um, what, there's, there's one, I, I know we figured out it was Garmin time, but I swear we could add like a Garmin time segment or something. Oh, I don't know. Well, well, we'll get there. <laughs> this um, is crazy. I, my final ranking is also ho, ho, hilarious. Um, this is a Christmas horror classic. Uh, to me, this is the definition of so bad. It's good. Um, <laughs> It steals the entire first half of the movie and still finds a way to actually be entertaining. And that's in a large part to Eric Freeman's performance Mm. being just so fun to watch and so fun to listen to. His line deliveries are amazing. His his facial expressions are just wild. Like he's so much fun. You know, he really carries this. If it hadn't if he hadn't done this performance in this exact way, this would have been a you'll be sorry for me. No, like a different actor wouldn't have given us the this iconic performance. And while it sounds like he was like rather embarrassed with the whole thing and, and was embarrassed with this movie. Um, I'm I, glad he's kind of come to a point in his life where, he, you know, he can laugh about it and be celebrated by people who actually enjoy this yeah. movie and find this movie fun. Like, no. and he is the star of that and he's the reason for it. And, yeah, and that say, alone is it's ho ho hilarious. I don't think he should be embarrassed about it at all. I don't think most actors couldn't pull off what he pulled off in this movie and they're trying to act like over the top. It doesn't usually work out. They just seem, they come off as like inauthentic, but he seems to be genuinely crazy. No, I, I, I read a thing where I think they had interviewed like two actors. Like it was down to, it was down to Eric Freeman and someone else. And like, by all accounts, maybe the other guy was a better actor, but Eric Freeman was just so crazy that they were like, we got to go with that guy. But like, no, that better actor probably wouldn't have made as good a movie. No. Well, and I mean, I don't get the big thing with people like, oh, he's overacting. You know, it's a huge performance. It's way too big for this movie. And it's like, oh, you mean like everything that Nicolas Cage does that everybody's so in love with? Not the bees. <laughs> well, it's the, you know, it's the, uh, it's the, oh, what uh, what do you call it from uh, when we were talking about Anna and the Apocalypse? The, uh, the you know, chewing the scenery. Like, yeah. you know. I, you know, Eric, Eric Freeman overacts, but he's not, you know, he's not, mm-hmm. you know, 
he, like I, you know, I don't think it's like he's going above and beyond. He's just kind of doing what he was told. Well, yeah, and I mean, it's like chewing the scenery and uh, overacting have never been considered like a bad thing to do because mm-hmm. it's like, well, I can think of two examples. I already mentioned Nicolas Cage, uh, Willem Dafoe. Yep. People love him, and he does the exact same thing. Look at his Norman Osborn performance in Spider Man. <laughs> no, yeah, that, those are great. <laughs> I mean, he's the same, even the same kind of crazy character that Eric Freeman's playing in this. Maybe that's maybe maybe <laughs> that's the only person who could have done as good a job. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, I, a remake with Willem Dafoe would be insane. <laughs> all right, we'll put all of our money towards remaking Silent Night, Deadly Night Two, and replacing all right, Eric Freeman with Willem Dafoe. Let's combine our money. I have five dollars. All right, we've got six dollars. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right. Well, let's move on to our naughty list. Um, and we'll take Billy, put him on our naughty list, uh, rank him a bunch Ricky. amongst all the other uh, Ricky. Ricky. <laughs> Ricky. <laughs> and it's a completely ranking... different character. Ricky Caldwell. Not Billy Chapman. <laughs> or Ricky Chapman. Rip... <laughs> <laughs> Not Billy Caldwell. <laughs> Not Ricky. Wait, I'm confused now. We'll take, we'll take Ricky and we'll put him on our naughty list amongst our other villains. What uh, do you think? Uh, he's got to be near the top. He's a supernatural entity who has memories of things he's never done, uh, seemingly knows events that happened across town when he was, uh, like, five years old. I mean, clearly he has some kind of, like, no- at least knowledge or ability to predict the future and see the past. He's like that kid. My, my wife and I are re-watching Malcolm in the Middle, and there's an episode where, like, Malcolm meets his match, where there's a kid that's, like, smarter than him. And the kid, like, literally goes, I remember being born. <laughs> like, he's yeah. that smart. That's Ricky. I was so I was I was thinking I was like initially I was like well we got to you know I'm like this movie's so goofy we got to put him below Billy but then I was thinking about it I was like Billy only kills eight people and fails to kill kill Mother Superior mm-hmm. uh, Ricky kills at least eleven if not more uh, the two guys in the theater mm-hmm. I you know I assume Ricky killed both the the theater heckler and his friend mm-hmm. but maybe he just beat him up well the people he killed before he met Jennifer. And then the uh, and then when he escape, he kills Doctor Bloom, and then we hear two orderlies like yelling for help. Mm-hmm. But and there there's two distinct voices. But like, did he kill him or did he like incapacitate him? I'm, I assume he killed him. I'd so say, I assume yeah. it's at least fifteen. I'm guessing he killed him because he doesn't leave anybody else alive except the little girl. And one of those people is Mother Superior, the person mm-hmm. his brother failed to kill. Yep. No, I mean if we're going straight by like deadliness as a killer, then yeah, he's better than Billy. I mean, he uses a gun. That puts him above Billy. To do you want to? Do you want to? Well, where do you want to put him if we're if we're ranking kind of supernatural killers? Like, <laughs> well, I'd put him. I'd put him probably the lowest of the supernatural killers if we're saying he has yeah. supernatural powers. <laughs> I was gonna say he's no. He doesn't have the ability like Michael Myers to just appear wherever he needs to be. Right. But no, I don't think we need to make him supernatural. <laughs> I would just say uh, he's probably above Billy, but he's still below like our. Our peak natural Santa, I think, is still four birds Santa. I agree. Because he has no magic powers, really, but he's like just like peak human fitness. Mm-hmm. I think he's below that, definitely. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I completely agree. But, we'll put him We'll but. put him right around there. Um, so, yeah, let's move on to uh, a segment where uh, we open our mailbag and, and uh, read mail. Hmm. Trash time. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's garbage time. <laughs> it is garbage time, Jay. Maybe we could do a it's garbage time campaign to get them to re-release this movie in the theaters. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll we'll see how much money we can we can cost Sony again by getting them to re-release a movie. <laughs> it's garbage time. Um, so uh, not not directly an email. Um, I was talking to my buddy Kyle about some uh, like about kind of horror movie questions and stuff like that. And he was like, hey, you know, and we were just kind of going back and forth. And he sent me like a couple. So uh, the next couple of weeks, if we don't get other uh, mm-hmm. emails, we'll kind of go through these. But one that he sent, uh, what one scene completely derailed a horror movie you were enjoying up till that point? Hmm. I'll have to think about that one. Do you have yours? Um, so the one that immediately leapt to mind. Um, and while we're while we're talking about this, uh, I am going to open up the Joe Bob Cooler. Oh boy, there's more stuff in there. Because we got uh, black and white Oreos, and we got Oreo Space Dunks. Oh boy. So we're going to try these also on the podcast. Um, but the one scene that le- leapt out to me, the, the first thing I thought of, was uh, Darkness Falls. Um, I think that movie's pretty creepy uh, overall. I really, 
I really enjoy Darkness Falls, and like it, it's it's kind of a movie that I still think about to this day. Like it's it's that kind of that kind of movie. Um, but the uh, the the very end where literally like he's in the lighthouse, he lights his fist on fire, and then he just goes, "I can see you, bitch," and punches <laughs> her in the face. Completely ruins the rest of the movie for me. So that I think that that was the first one I thought of. I I uh, I'm, I'm sure there's others. But like that was the one where I went like, oh yeah, like that goofy <laughs> line kind of ruins that whole fun movie. I really am trying to think. Let's see what. Mm. Also, anyway, so uh, Oreo space dunks are uh, five galactic cosmic galactic designs and cro- cosmic cream with popping candy. They uh, have like space stuff on the Oreo cookies and blue in pink cream. Which I assume, like I said, it says popping candy, so I assume it has pop rocks inside. I guess we'll find out. And then Oreo black and whites are um, white Oreos or the the like the vanilla Oreos with uh, black and white cream, like a black and white cookie. Mm, let's try them. There's one. I'm trying to remember the name of the movie. I mean, there's. I don't want to use it as mine, but one of the ones I thought of was uh, the first time I saw the one of the CGI forms of the clown and the it. The first part of the it remake that really took me out of that movie. No, some of some of those are really really <laughs> bad. Um, the the C, that is that is actually a great answer. Like the CGI in both movies, but yeah. but especially in part one, um, when, when he bites off uh, uh, the brother's arm. Like looks so terrible. The CGI on the uh, leper's face, the the old like uh, the old soldier's face, mm-hmm. looks bad. And then the CGI of like the woman playing the clarinet or whatever also looks fucking terrible. Yeah, no, I say that sprang to mind. Oh no, I remember what it was. Um, the 2006 remake of the Omen. Uh, you know, it's almost a shot for shot remake of the original. But they do one thing differently. They do a different devil reveal, and the devil looks so ridiculous that I couldn't ke- uh, take the movie seriously after that. It's like, if, if you ever seen it? Uh, I don't believe I have. It's a guy, basically it's just a guy in a red hood with like a skull mask on. And it's like, after they showed me that, I could not take any of the movie seriously at all. Oreo black and white cookie is pretty good. Um, but the... Uh... Uh, but no, uh, back to back to it. Also, it chapter two has the uh, uh, has the giant lumberjack. Yeah, that thing looks fucking silly too. It looks terrible. Uh, the space dunk, I think, is pretty good. Um, and then uh, oh, I just I, I also just had one. Um, oh, you've heard me. You've actually heard me talk about these. Um, that does look <laughs> that does look very silly. Um, no, you've heard me talk about these. Um, a big a big complaint of mine is the Conjuring movies, the Conjuring universe. Um, oh yeah, and uh, I know I know what you're gonna say. And and the first movie absolutely like like is great, is very atmospheric, is is rather creepy. Love love that first movie. The uh, the second the like starting after that, like when we get each one, and I've not seen um, all the all of the Conjuring universe movies, but there's a scene in each one. That just completely takes me out of it. And they all happen at different points. Um, Annabelle creation. It's when you see the, uh, it's when you see the Annabelle doll or like the Annabelle demon in the barn. Like it looks so fucking stupid. Um, just bad. Like I think like bad CGI or bad makeup. Um, in the first Annabelle, it's when the little girl's standing across the hall and runs towards the door. The door starts to shut, and then the grown woman bursts through the door and attacks the mom with a knife. Yep. <laughs> that seems hilarious. <laughs> and then, of course, in The Nun, it's when they split the blood of Christ in <laughs> Valak's face, <laughs> which is just so dumb. But my absolute favorite, and Jeff's heard me talk about this one before, <laughs> is in Conjuring 2. When uh, when Lorraine Warren's standing in the room and she's painted the picture of the nun and it's hanging on the wall, and you watch the shadow walk across the wall to directly behind the picture of the nun, and then you watch the long spindly fingers curl around the outside of the frame, and then it just runs towards her really fast. Amazing. It's so insanely silly, and every time I've seen the nun since then, it just makes me laugh because all I can think of is that stupid picture scene. <laughs> 
I, you know, the the nun movie the entire time. Every time we see Valak, I crack up the rest of the Conjuring when Va- the 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 climax of the movie when Valak's mm-hmm. standing there in the room and the house is being torn apart. I'm just cracking <laughs> up because this was a picture that ran out of lady at one point. Yep. Oh, um. So have you seen the Nun Part Two yet? I have not seen the Nun Part. I've not seen the Nun Part Two, Conjuring Three, or Anna. Or I've seen about half of Annabelle Three. Um, mm. The the scene, at least up till this point, the scene that that made me laugh was when in Annabelle Three the uh, light shines around the room till it lands on the 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 box with the lock in it to open the door or mm. the key in it. Yeah, like that scene's pretty funny. Like just the the conceit of that whole scene. Well, I don't. I'll spoil it for you, Jay, because I don't know if you'll ever even watch it. Uh, the Nun Two. They kill Valak with the blood of Christ a second time. <laughs> of course, they fucking. Do. That's literally how it ends, just the same way that the first one does. Ah uh, man, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, no, I. That was an excellent question, uh, my buddy Kyle sent in. He's got a couple more. Oh, so, like okay. I said, if we don't get any other emails, we'll just always we'll save these so we have a question to talk about and. Um. Uh, if I had to rank the two Oreos, I think I prefer the black and white cookie. I agree. Uh, the, of course, I'm, I'm always a bigger fan of the golden Oreo than I am the regular. No, I, I, I agree that golden Oreo is fantastic. Um, the space dunks aren't bad though. Uh, no, well, I'd eat them. Yeah, they're, uh, they're pretty cool and I, they, they taste good. Uh, my kids will devour these, you know, but when they get out of school and, uh, there won't be any left. So I'm glad we at least got to try these before they were gone. <laughs> uh, your kids go to school, Jay. <laughs> I thought you were uh, in queue with me. <laughs> um, but no, uh, uh, you know, thanks for listening. If you want to send us an email for our garbage day segment. Yeah! <laughs> uh, garbage. What? God damn it. Garbage day, Jay. I thought we weren't going to mention garbage day in this episode. Billy doesn't. Uh, Billy says it's garbage time. That is the new lore. It's uh, garbage time. I knew guys. I was. I knew I was going to trip up at some point. <laughs> it's trash day. Send us an email. <laughs> horror for the holidays at gmail dot com. But yes, we'll acknowledge it now. Um, Do you, give me your best garbage day, Jay, to sign off. Ba-da-da-dun. Garbage day. <laughs> that was pretty good. All right, how about yours? <laughs> okay. Garbage day. <laughs> <laughs> that one's great too. Um, I saved this because I knew at some point one of us would slip up. Um, Shutter's description of the movie is a notorious sequel, a Christmas killer, garbage day. Perfect. <laughs> Perfection. No notes. Oh man, I knew it was going to happen at some point. I, I, we almost did it. We almost got away with it. I thought it was going to be me who slipped up, but it ended up being Jay. Uh, but yeah, send us an email, holidays at gmail.com. If you want to get in touch with us, us on social media, we are on Instagram, Threads, Blue Sky, Twitter. Um, we are TikTok. We are horror, the number four holidays. Um, uh, go to youtube.com slash horror for the holidays. Subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell. Listen to the episodes. Leave comments. Be like Jeff and Jay fat eating into the microphone again. Oh, we're trying not to, guys, but it's hard. <laughs> They're, we're, we're so big and the microphones are so little <laughs> that's true um but yeah uh follow us on the on the q app where we uh kind of review these movies we also use it to to spin the wheel and decide what movie we're going to watch next yes the q app one app to unite all movies um we are there horror for holidays uh, we we get a we've got a couple followers. I think it's just because we've got a large collection of Christmas horror movies as the only movies on our list. I think so. Um, but yeah, we usually use that. So we it decides the movie instead of you know Jeff and I fighting over whether to watch The Apology or The Retaliators or uh, Sick for Toys or The Munsters of Scary Little Christmas or The American Scream again. <laughs> oh boy, what if we had to watch that again? <laughs> you know, Jay, we may do that someday. Go back and watch we one should, of the worst ones. We should go back and rewatch our worst rated movies and see if they still hold up to our worst <laughs> ratings after we've watched so many other movies. Uh, may, yeah, maybe maybe like in a couple of years. Yeah. We'll, we'll do that, that for like that's a stocking way, stuff. That's way down the road. 
And if you enjoyed the stocking stuffers, uh, stick with it. I thought maybe a cool thing to do would be on the stocking stuffers. Maybe we announce what our next movie is. Yeah, we could do that. Um, That way, you know, people, people kind of know they could also follow us on the app, but that's, that'd be kind of a fun thing to do. They're not going to follow us, Jay. Although, uh, yes, subscribe to us on your pod catcher of choice, download our episodes, give us uh, ratings. We've been getting a lot more downloads lately. And and tell a friend. You know, that's I, I, I do think that is the best way to, to spread word about a podcast, something you like. You know, it one of your friends is gonna be more likely to listen to something than just leaving a review on the internet. True. Uh, the reviews certainly help us and they they help get the word out. But you know, if, if you're like, hey, I really like this podcast, you know, Matt, you know, writing in Rue Morg saying, hey, I was on this podcast and had fun. And then, you know, Spencer, our listener, mm-hmm. you know, read that thing and went, I'm going to listen and has now apparently listened to every single episode and, you know, is our number one fan. Yep. Spencer, number one fan. If you want to dethrone him, get to watching. <laughs> uh, but yeah, other than that, um, thanks. We'll see you again next week with another uh, stocking stuffer. We'll reveal that when when the time comes. Mm, the time will come, Jay. And it'll be garbage time. <laughs> uh, other than that, uh, thanks for listening. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. Garbage day. Garbage day! Garbage day. Garbage day. Jay Logsdon. Hashtag Jay Logsdon. Spoiled it. Garbage day. Garbage day. Garbage day. <laughs> Garbage day. <laughs> <laughs>